Well, hello and welcome back to episode two of this three-part series all about the kitchen setup. In episode one, we went through the blue bin contents, which included all of the camp cooking and cleaning and some camp accessories. So if you haven't seen that episode already, uh, I would certainly encourage you to check it out. It's a good one. In this episode, we're gonna segue on to this big item behind me, which is the Dometic CFX3-75DZ for dual zone. So for years, I lived the cooler life and that involved after a day or two, the bottom third being uh, floating cold water with a layer of ice cubes floating around and maybe a pickle jar. There was uh, more than likely a half cut tomato somewhere in there and every label was peeling off. I knew that the dream was going to be to have a proper fridge freezer, but I will say that this was not the most straightforward and simple setup, but we're gonna save those details for episode three, which is going to go through this electrical system and how we have this set up. We're gonna focus primarily on this right here, which as mentioned, is a 75 liter Dometic fridge freezer combo. It can also be a fridge fridge or a freezer freezer, but I think most people will have it set up as a fridge freezer as I do here today. And we're also gonna talk about this. This is the Dometic slide for the uh, fridge freezer. So this slide in particular is model number CFX3-SLD75, referring to the 75 liter fridge that it is intended to be paired for. And, uh, and I'll walk you through exactly the operations on both how it works and how to install it. Because if you have a 2009 through 2014 F-150 specifically with the rear tailgate sidestep, then there's gonna be a few extra steps that you're gonna need to take. And uh, hopefully this will help you uh, figure out your setup as well. So to pull it out, there is a release tab right here on the front. The slide does lock in both its closed and its open positions, which is really important if you're parking on any sort of grade, either the vehicle facing down or back. Should the nose be up in the air, you don't want this coming crashing at you uh, as soon as you drop your tailgate. Now, the way that I have it set up here is slightly different than how Dometic recommends. There are two additional straps that are intended to secure this handle to the slide. However, as it is, I have it uh, secured with the four bolts from underneath, two straps on the interior handle, and there's not really that much clearance between the top of the, the fridge assembly and my tonneau cover to begin with. So for myself, in the event of an accident or incident, I feel very confident that not only is this fridge freezer not going to move from its current position because I don't think there's enough room for it to get outside of this tray, but also there's no occupants or passengers or people to get injured in the actual pickup box. So I've opted to omit those two straps, but should you be mounting this in the back of say a 4Runner or an SUV, then I would recommend um, following the Dometic's uh, instructions. Myself though, I really like the idea of being able to grab a handle to help pull it out if the vehicle was pointed in its downward position. So as you can see here, it does lock in its uh, extended position, but there is a bit of movement and that's simply just because only one side actually locks. If I was to wave a magic wand, I would actually really like to see both sides lock so that there isn't this additional play. It's quite secure in its uh, closed position, but when it's out like this, it can make for a little bit of unnecessary movement. Is that going to impact the functionality of the product? No, not at all, but uh, it's worth noting nonetheless. So starting at the front of the unit, we have a little display here with a power on and return button, uh, temperature cycles and an okay button here. So what we can do is we can access this screen to change uh, different parameters, uh, most obviously the temperature in each zone. So it is independently zone controlled. What we can also do is we can change the voltage threshold. So that's at what input volts the uh, fridge is detecting at which point it wants to shut off. And that's a way to try to protect the starter battery in your vehicle if you have it hooked up to a starter battery. Similarly, it can be used to protect a deep cycle battery, but uh, at that point, what you would be doing is lowering that threshold so that you can discharge that deep cycle battery a lot more than you would normally on a starter battery. There's a little grommet here in the front with a USB-A. If it's USB-C, that would be amazing. The fact that it's USB-A, I'm not super upset about it. Quite honestly, it would make for like a nice little charging station for your phone. Um, that way you kind of know where it is. It's a nice, easy access here from the outside. The handle is super strong. This is 
solid aluminum. It has a spring load to it, so it's going to stay in its down position. That way you're not going to get excessive rattling. And, uh, and it's a nice clean, uh, well, not figuratively clean, not literally clean. Uh, I'm still working on a solution on how to um, block off the uh, dust from entraining up from underneath the actual tailgate assembly itself. So it's worth noting that each one of these lids is reversible. I'm gonna go ahead and open up them here. You can see that there is a tab. You simply just pop it out and um, switch the actual hinge assembly from side to side. And these doors will actually come right off. You just simply roll them back. So if you had say um, some condensation formation from the freezer, then what you can do is you can remove these doors after you've powered off the unit uh, to air it out uh, so that you don't promote uh, mold formation inside the actual fridge. To get them back on, you simply just press down. One, two, and they're back closed. So from here, we can see on the inside of each compartment, there is a light to help illuminate the compartments. Uh, the fridge side that I'm calling it does have a central divider, but this is sort of the beginning of the feedback that I'd like to issue for Dometic. Because, as you can see, it, it, there are full depth compartments. However, if you have uh, soft items like bananas or tomatoes, things that uh, peaches, pears, you know, just fruits in general, um, that would be very easily squished. And these are quite deep compartments. So it's nice that you could keep a full thing of orange juice or milk in here, but um, any fruits end up in the bottom. And there's no sort of top uh, container um, that you could drop into here. So what I'd like to see is an, a, an additional basket that goes in one side or the other that uh, subdivides it top versus bottom. So you could have all your jars, glassware, you know, heavy things in the bottom and be able to lift out, you know, the, you know, your avocados or things that might get bruised or even just rupture. So I'd like to see that. And that would be, you know, an easy little optional accessory that Domatic could come out with and, and upsell. The center divider is removable. You could put, you know, larger items in here, but uh, myself, you know, I have a, I have a, uh, a pie here, a nice apple pie that we're going to enjoy later today. And um, just for size reference. So I have had to put this in on a bit of an angle um, simply just because of this center divider. So again, you can't just lift it and put it under because as soon as it comes up, then it's going to interfere with the lid actually closing. So it's either all or 50, 50. So this side is what I'm calling the freezer. You can see I have an ice cream in here for size reference. This would be considered, I think, a one pint. So it fits very nicely in this upper compartment. Um, here we have a taller bottle for reference. And one little pro tip would be to add water in here and freeze it. That way, each time you open and close the freezer door, it can help thermally regulate this. The fact that I've had this open right now, the temperature in the very bottom will still be cold, but now it's gonna be about plus 22 degrees Celsius up top. Um, this is sort of the idea that I'd like to see have an optional accessory for the fridge side. So the freezer does have a lift out compartment here and a separate lift out in the bottom. If you're wondering, no, this doesn't fit in the fridge side. It's just a bit too tall and there's no little tabs for it to grab onto. I wish that it did. And trust me, I tried. The reason that this is a smaller volume in here is because in the back is where the, um, oh, we've got a bee on my hand. In the back is where all the, um, you know, actual compressor and, you know, Freon and all that good stuff lives. So the one compartment is smaller than the other. And so for me, I think that this is uh, perfectly suitable for um, freezer use. You can see here we have the light on the freezer side, just like how we have a light on the fridge side. It may not appear that bright in daylight, but it actually does a really nice job at nighttime. One other feature that Dometic might consider is if you're going to lose this, say, three quarters to one inch space down here in terms of clearance, is actually maybe considering an extendable cutting board or tray that can come off the back here. Because when you are actually accessing items from inside, it would be really nice to be able to put them down somewhere. So I was thinking even a slider under a slider might be kind of a cool idea. They could even sell it as an optional accessory add-on where maybe they utilize some of those pre-existing holes from underneath and, uh, and then you can add it uh, later if you think that that might work for your setup. So yeah, a little slide underneath. I might actually even consider trying to do that on my own. So wish me luck. So I mentioned earlier that I have the tops set up to open up towards driver's side. And there's a reason for that. So it's actually the same reason why I have my rooftop tent oriented to flip out passenger side. 
And the reason is, is that if you happen to find yourself maybe not in a uh, wilderness area like we are here today, but if you're actually using a predefined campground to camp in, then the way that all those sites are oriented are for RV trailers. So that the, um, the door for access and egress of those trailers is on that passenger side. And so the flow of your campsite is going to be such that the, the entertaining and the picnic table and the fire pit are all going to be over here. So then the actual tent will come out this way. Maybe next year we might see the addition of an awning coming out this way as well. And so then you can have your actual cooking space here on the tailgate so that you can actually kind of, you know, maintain flow with the campsite and people can come around and engage the cooler this way. Um, it also does a nice secondary job of sort of separating these two spaces. And so what um, I'm looking to do here with this product that will be coming in a future video, this is the Waterport uh, Weekender, is having that mounted on the outside for a bit of a shower station on the, the driver's side of the vehicle so that this becomes sort of partitioned from the rest of the campsite and having it extend out and open and close this way will actually help with that. So by now you've probably noticed that there is not a fill panel here. This is one job that I have not yet completed and I will certainly update when I do. My truck was equipped with the tailgate step ladder here for F-150s. Now, this is a style that I believe emerged in 2009 and was valid till 2014. In 2015, when Ford updated to the aluminum series F-150, they also did a second generation tailgate where they incorporated the actual handle assembly right into the interior. This generation, however, there was a handle assembly that had a big uh, sort of clevis that bolted on here and the handle sat on top. And then Ford used uh, one big molded plastic piece uh, on top. And that was annoying even just with regular items, but it made installing this fridge Dometic slide effectively impossible. I did try a few different combinations from a good friend of mine 3D printing some spacers to try to lift it up. Then we ran into clearance issues up top though we were able to clear the front side of this, the actual bottom of the tray uh, flips down at the back and so the back side caught. So what I ended up resorting to is removing the actual handle assembly. I'm young and nimble enough that I can still crawl in and you can still use the functionality of the stepladder itself. And then I went to um, Canadian Tire, our local sort of automotive general houseware store, and I picked up a couple of cans of the bedliner and this is what it's resulted in. Now, the reason that this is um, not bedlinered and is still open is because on models that are not equipped with the actual uh, handle and step, there's a factory fill plate. Good luck finding one of those. I've checked probably, oh gosh, 10 or 15 wreckers at this point, and I cannot find one. Just last week, actually, I found an article on one F-150 forum where a gentleman was doing something similar uh, by removing uh, the cover in the handle. And he simply just got 14-gauge uh, uh, steel and bedlinered it himself and uh, tapped uh, or drilled some holes, and that was it. That's going to be the plan in the future, so just need to, uh, to get that material and go from there. So one other issue that I ran into is you can see that in the bottom of the bed, there are these ribs and these are meant to sort of um, provide longevity to the actual bed so that it's not flat and strength, strength and longevity. However, to get the actual slide to sit flat, um, I got very lucky in that I had intended on mounting it here on the left, but you'll have to make sure or, or pay attention that if you are mounting it in the bed, that each of the drawer slides is mounted on one of those ribs. Otherwise you may have to, or you will have to shim up one side or the other to get it to fit appropriately. Last but not least, one issue I ran into was this bar. I actually didn't think that I needed this bar because the actual rib ends about three quarters of the way up it. So I thought, oh, okay, it's not gonna provide any real strength. However, as you can see here, once weighted down, it does end up bowing. And if it's not appropriately secured down, then there's a uh, little tab associated with the actual uh, lock and release mechanism that will actually catch on this bar. So just save yourself a lot of headache and go ahead and install. If there's a hole in the bottom of this bracket, throw a bolt through it. Now that's a good segue into actually how we have it bolted down. So you can just see here at the top, there are 
Um, I've used Torx stainless steel 18-8 fasteners with a uh, nylock washer on the bottom side. Though it's relatively um, dry on the inside of a bed, you're still gonna get exposure to rain and water, both from up top and from underneath. So I strongly recommend use of stainless hardware when securing it. So there are two ways to actually power the fridge freezer. One is how we have it set up here, which is through a cigarette lighter style 12 volt with the built-in fuse. The other way is actually straight from a 115 wall outlet. And so what you can do is, if you don't have a setup just like this, you can plug the fridge freezer in a couple hours before you leave into the 115, bring it down to your desired temperature, and then plug it into your vehicle while you're driving down the road. Um, there's just simply a plug on the back and you can unplug one and plug in the other. Now, apparently when these fridges first came out, it was maybe advertised that you could use both plugged in at the same time, but the owner's manual as it specifies now, and I think this was a, a change up, is that it says only have one cable plugged in at a time. So uh, if all else fails, just default to the owner's manual. So as you probably know, one of my ethical standards here for the channel is that I only review products that I like. And the fact that this is on here is a good indicator that I really like both of these. Um, my only real criticism, if I was to offer one, is actually just simply the price of this slide. The actual fridge freezer here in Canada, I believe retails for about $1,799. So it is not an inexpensive piece of equipment. But I also want to note that in doing my research, I was actually uh, exploring the idea of buying a pre-owned one myself. And uh, prices are actually still really strong. And the only pre-owned one was about 4,000 kilometers from where I live. So it just wasn't gonna be realistic to, to go that route. The slide, however, though, uh, which was acquired from Rack Attack, cost approximately $550 Canadian, roughly 25% the value of the entire fridge freezer. Now, these slides are not inexpensive, but I really liked the idea of having the integration between the actual fridge freezer and the slide, because there are, again, these predefined bolt holes for them specifically, that uh, with included 18-8 stainless fasteners that allow you to bolt the actual fridge to the slide itself. For the price, um, knowing how much these um, actual side rails cost, um, I know that they're probably the most expensive part of all of this. So I would have liked to have seen dual locking slides. Um, it's not a deal breaker. Uh, in fact, um, if they did have dual locking slides and for whatever reason it was mounted or on uneven ground, you may only end up clicking in one at a time. So uh, who's to say that maybe if that was the case, I might not be uh, disappointed on the back end if it wasn't uh, working exactly how I thought. That said, um, it has actually worked phenomenally well. Um, there were in a couple issues which I did discover um, on this, and um, I'm trying to save anything and everything electrical for the third episode. So I'm not gonna cover it here. I'm just gonna talk about more specifically the product itself. But um, yeah, suffice to say it was electrical related. That said, it's incredibly efficient. And um, once it's actually at your desired preset temperature, I think it uses only about like one amp hour per hour, give or take. Now, if you have it set really, really low in the freezer uh, side of things, it will obviously consume more. But what I ended up finding is um, that I had the freezer set too cold because what I was doing was I wanted to take a burger out and just throw it right in the frying pan and get cooking. Uh, but it was too cold, it was too frozen. So I ended up raising the temperature still to a freezing, but a low freezing so that I can actually just take it out of the freezer and, uh, and, and, and uh, get cooking with it. So a little bit of, uh, of my experience there, I suppose. So if you're kind of wondering, well, why is there a fridge freezer on a mountain biking channel? And the simple reason is, is that the way that I have used this is not only for when I'm traveling and, and camping in the tent, but I've actually used this on day trips as well. So what I can do is I can throw all my water bottles in the fridge freezer. I can have uh, one nice ice cold water bottle for the start of my ride. And if I'm doing multiple laps, I can just grab a nice cold fresh water bottle for multiple laps. Again, you can absolutely do that with a cooler if you're just out for a day trip. But the beauty of this is that I can do this, you know, nine days into, um, you know, a, a mountain biking trip. And by that point, you know, your cooler and ice situation is probably struggling. Or even if you're using the, 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 the blocks, you still need to be able to refreeze those. 
So whether it's one day or nine days, the Dometic CFX3-75 DZ is going to have you covered. So as always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you found this at all helpful, useful, or entertaining, please consider subscribing. It would greatly help me out. I am desperately trying to get this channel to 1,000 subscribers so these videos can come monetized and I can buy a GoPro for the on-bike filming so that it don't make you nauseous watching those videos. That said, um, please keep an eye out for episode three, which is going to be all about the electric systems. That is going to walk through exactly the challenges that I ran into with the fridge freezer, as well as how you can hook it up for um, a safe, reliable, no questions asked, multi-day setup in your vehicle without any risk to that starting battery going dead. Thank you, take care and bye for now. Thank you.